Okay. Hey guys, and welcome to our four week treatment protocol on how to deal with thoracic kyphosis and Sherman's disease. So who am I? My name is Eric Wood Salomon. I'm a physiotherapist practicing in Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. I'm registered with the College of Physiotherapists of Ontario. I received my undergraduate degree in kinesiology from the University of Waterloo and I received my master's degree in science and physiotherapy from Dalhousie University in Halifax, Nova Scotia. So what we're gonna be going over um, through the course of these four weeks is the same experience my clients would get in clinic if they were coming in to see me to help them treat thoracic kyphosis or Sherman's disease. We're gonna talk about how to position your body and move it in a way that will eliminate these issues and get you healthy, strong, and fit in the process. So first of all, what is thoracic kyphosis? Thoracic kyphosis is actually the normal curvature in your spine. So we have three curves in the spine. The first one is up in our neck. This is called your cervical spine. That has a, a lordotic curve. It sort of curves inwards. The next curve comes outwards, and this is the one that's called kyphosis. So through my mid-back, it curves sort of away from my body. And then again, I'll get another curve, a lumbar or lordosis in the low back. So you can see there's three, sort of um, through your mid-back, your neck, uh, your cervical spine, your mid-back, and then your low back. The issue here is not thoracic kyphosis. The, the real issue is excessive kyphosis, which means that instead of a normal curvature, I'm exaggerating it with poor position. And this will manifest itself with a lot of different sort of mechanical pain syndromes. So you'll see here, if I go into a passive position, so if I start hanging off my body, my head drops to the front of my body. This is called a forward head posture. What this does is it increases the strain and stress on the back side of my neck because if my head drops forward, I then have to lift it up so I can see the horizon. You can see actually the wrinkles that start to form in the back of my neck. Those are pressure points now in your cervical spine as well as uh, pinching the musculature at the base of your skull and neck. So what can happen with this is called a mechanical headache where over the course of the day you'll feel the stress and strain in the neck. Oftentimes this will sort of creep up into the back of the head. It can manifest into a headache actually right at the front of your head. And this is because the muscles in the neck are really sensitive and highly innervated. There's lots of neural connections back there. And if I'm straining my neck, with this forward head posture caused by this passive position, I can create headache and discomfort. The other issue with this, it creates open mouth breathing, which is pretty gross. Um, when my head drops forward, my jaw will passively open. The issue with this is we're not actually using the filter in our nose to filter the air we're breathing so you can get sick more often because you're breathing in and out of your mouth. The other thing that happens with this passive position or this excessive kyphosis is that my shoulder tips in front of my body. What that does is it messes up the mechanics of the joint and the muscle pull and action. So my range of motion now is decreased as opposed to an active position where I can elevate my arm right over my head. When my shoulder drops to the front of my body, we can create something called impingement syndrome, which is basically a pinching of the muscles in your rotator cuff. As that gets aggravated and the symptoms become worse, it can actually cause radiating pain down the front of your arm. You can actually experience pain in the mid-back, in your uh, thoracic spine itself, just from that compression and stretch and irritation of those tissues. But lastly, this can create low back pain, again, because my alignment has shifted forward. So if I'm in a passive position, my head, shoulders are now in front of my spine, I'm putting extra strain on my low back. As well, my rib cage has collapsed in this position, which puts my trunk musculature on slack, which basically means that I've now thrown off the length tension relationship there, so there's no tension in that muscle supporting my guts, as well as my lumbar spine. Um, the issue with Sherman's disease, they don't really know the cause. Um, I don't, my personal opinion is that it's not actually a disease. This is simply caused by chronic poor position. So if we think about the vertebrae, those are the bones along your thoracic spine. They're block-like shapes stacked on top of one another. The density of those bones is actually different from the front to back. 
So if you were to look through my body at the front side of my vertebrae, the front end of those vertebrae are actually less dense than the back side. So what that means is there's something called trabeculae inside the bone, which is a sort of calcified cross bridge structure, and that provides rigidity and support. So you have less support at the front of the vertebrae and more support at the back. What then happens with excessive kyphosis is when I tip forward and hunch into this position, I'm increasing the compressive loading at the front side of the vertebrae, and that's the side with actually less density to begin with. So what happens over time with this chronic microtrauma is that we deform the thoracic vertebrae into a wedge shape. Now once that deformation has occurred, you can't correct the shape of the bone, that change is permanent. However, um, we can still improve and sort of optimize the position. And so if you have, if you've been diagnosed with Sherman's disease, uh, there's still hope, we can still improve and get you into a better position with simple exercises, and that's what we're gonna be going over in the next segment. All right, homework piece number one. And this is the most important principle over the course of this entire four week process. If you grab a hold of this on its own, we will essentially eliminate the problem. Okay, so I'm giving it away right from the beginning. We're gonna stand with what's called active posture. Active means you're contracting the musculature between the shoulder blades along the length of your spine. This, this is gonna hold you in that best position and it will eliminate that excessive kyphosis and the problems um, that are a result of Sherman's disease. We can sort of prevent that from happening, okay? So what I want you to think about is we're gonna bring the shoulder blades, that's the piece of bone on the back side of your upper shoulder. We're gonna bring the shoulder blades up and back. So you see my shoulder moving out of this passive position, this excessive kyphosis position, to this active posture. My shoulder is moving up and back, okay? While I do this, I feel the musculature between my shoulder blades elevate and contract. So I can feel this muscle contracting. And you'll notice now my hands end up at the side of my thigh and my middle finger is at the seam of my pants. And this is how you know you're in the right position. So my shoulder blades go up and back and my middle finger ends up at the seam of my pants. This is what I want you guys to focus on. Typically what happens is people will relax and go into this passive position and look where my hands end up right at the front of your thighs. So every time you catch yourself here, you just gotta think, whoops, shoulder blades up and back, is my middle finger at the seam of the pants? That's the sweet spot. What we have to do is, is change your perception of your body's position, okay? If you're used to an excessive kyphosis, which is here, bringing the shoulder blades up and back and having the middle finger at the seam of your pants will feel extreme. What I want you to think about is, the position is not extreme, it's your perception of the position. So for example, if you were to jump into some cold water, you feel the frigidity of the water initially, but after you're swimming around for a little bit, you don't notice the, temp the temperature anymore. So the issue is the temperature of the water hasn't changed. Your perception of the temperature of the water has changed. So what's going to be happening over the course of this four week protocol is that this position, this active position, is gonna to start to feel more and more normal, and you will begin catching yourself when you are slouching and in that passive position. The last piece in standing I want you to focus on is not hyperextending the knee. So typically what happens is people will hyperextend the knee and then hang off their spine. This position looks terrible, it feels terrible. What's happening is I'm hanging off my knee joint which pushes, pushes my pelvis forward and then my shoulders and head collapse as well. So I'm hanging off my joints and capsules and exaggerating this kyphosis. So we start this by gently knocking the knee. And you can actually see when I do this, if I hyperextend my knee, the muscle in my legs turns off. Once I knock the knee, you can see that muscle engage again. So now, this is now what we call an active position. And again, active position is the one that we want to be working towards. So I'm gonna get my knee out of hyperextension just a little bit to there. Bring my shoulder blades up and back, middle finger at the seam of my pants, and this is homework piece number one. This is the sweet spot. I'm nice and tall. You also notice my rib cage has elevated, so I'm putting a gentle stretch and tension on my trunk musculature. My head is nice and high. It's not in front of my spine, and that's the sweet spot.
Okay, homework piece number two. This is called extension on a foam roll. So ideally, you'll be using a foam roll, which is basically a three foot long piece of foam. If you don't have one of these, I'll show you, that's okay, I'll show you how you can do it without one. Basically, what we're gonna be doing is a stretch on the floor that will be putting us in the exact opposite position to the one we're typically in for the most part of the day. So for example, if you're using a cell phone, typing on the computer, driving your car, eating, we tend to get pulled forward. So what happens with that is adaptively, the muscles in the front of my chest and shoulders will get tight, which makes it more challenging to actually get into that active position we went over in the first piece of our homework. So the solution is gonna to be to lay down on the floor or on a foam roll. We're just gonna lay it, lay it down. We're gonna put your tailbone, that's the bone basically just right above um, the buttocks at the edge. So I'm gonna sit down at the edge, lay back, I'm gonna keep my knees bent and my feet flat on the floor. My head is supported in the foam roll. Okay, so this is important. If your forward head posture is really aggressive, it may feel actually quite uncomfortable for you to put your head in the foam roll. So if you have a really aggressive forward head posture, your head might sort of fall back and you might feel a lot of pressure in the neck. If that's the case, what I want you to do is get some books and put them behind your head to give yourself a little space as your mobility increases, the goal is to work your head down to the foam roll so that now my body's posture and position is neutral. Okay, so once your head and tailbone are supported in the foam roll, we're going to bring the arms out into the crucifix position, which is about 90 degrees from your trunk, palms facing the ceiling. Okay, in this position, you should be feeling a gentle stretch across the front of the chest. And again, this is the opposite of where we tend to get stuck during the day on the computer and driving. Okay, so my head's on the foam roll, palms are facing the ceiling. We're feeling a gentle pull and stretch across the chest and shoulders. As well, you should be feeling some pressure on your mid back where it's contacting the foam roll. That's okay. What we don't want is to get numbness into the hands or fingers. Okay, numbness is never good. All that means is you have we're getting a really intense stretch in the muscles as well as the nerves that are coursing through your chest into your hands. If you feel that numbness, you're gonna drop your hands down to a lower position until the sensation returns, and then you go back up. And so this is gonna be once a day, every day, for five minutes. Okay, the reason we're hanging out here for five minutes is that to create change in our body's tissues, we need to hold them on stretch for time, okay? So our body's tissues have a property called viscoelasticity, which, mean, which means that the longer we hold the position, the more stretch and change we can create. So basically, over the course of these four weeks, we're gonna be progressing this to more aggressive stretches as your body adapts and responds. Oh, so again, we don't want numbness in, down the arms and the fingers. If you get the numbness, you drop the hands down. It's gonna be for five minutes once a day. All right guys, so if you don't have a foam roll, we're gonna be getting into the same position, except just laying down on the floor, basically. So we'll get down to the floor. My knees, knees are bent, feet are flat, and I'm going to bring my arms out to 90 degrees. Now again, ideally, you can put maybe, if you roll up a towel, or if you have a long pillow that you can lay down on, that's better. However, if you don't, that's fine. Just lay down flat on the floor, and again, if this position creates pain in the neck, for example, if you feel like your head is having to pinch back, what I want you to do is get some books to place under your head to space it out from the floor, and then as your mobility improves, you'll be able to remove those books as your head gets closer, and the goal is to be in this position, okay? We're gonna have our arms at 90 degrees, and gently contract the shoulder blades together, sort of pinching them together, if you don't have a foam roll and you're just going on the floor, that's fine. Again, we don't want numbness in the hands or fingers. If you're getting that numbness, you drop the arms down till the sensation returns, and then when it does, we're gonna go back to that 90 degrees. Five minutes every day, once a day. Guys, homework piece number three. I like you to think about your breathing pattern during the week. So proper breathing is gonna be in and out through the rib cage. So as I inhale, my rib cage elevates, my shoulder blades naturally come up and back, my middle fingers at the seam of my pants. This is our power position, this is an active, upright, nice posture. 
when you exhale, don't lose the position though. So maintain some of that tension and then just let the, let the air come out of the lungs and maintain a nice upright posture. So we have three things that you're focusing on. Maintaining active posture during the day, five minutes of extension on the foam roll or on the floor if you don't have one, and lastly, that breathing pattern. So guys, stick with me over the course of this four weeks. If you're consistent with the effort and homework, you're gonna get the results. It's simple stuff. You just have to keep doing it over and over and over. Last thing, you might be getting a little bit of muscle soreness between the shoulder blades and along the length of your spine. That's okay, it's called delayed onset muscle soreness. That's what happens when you're contracting muscles that you haven't before. What's gonna be happening over the course of this four weeks is that you're actually building new muscle tissue and changing your perception of your body's position in space. You're gonna start feeling better, more vitality, more energy, all these great things that are associated with active posture. And we'll catch you guys next week.